Day 745 of the Ukrainian war map, also known as the Russo-Ukrainian war. Juzzy here, and today is another update as I take a simplified and down-to-earth approach to some of the most important happenings on the ground in Ukraine. So starting off, we'll take a look at those Russian losses, as currently Russia sits on more than 424,000 military personnel losses, which represents an additional 900 in the past day. Then as for hardware losses, 19 tanks, 27 APVs, 38 artillery, and 69 unarmored military vehicles. Which, in my time looking at these numbers, I'm quite certain that is record-breaking, even if it is just a, a bunch of Russian tin can Buhanka vans, like this recent one, with what would appear to be some pretty questionable insignias on the roof. At first glance, I gave it the, the benefit of the doubt because the main symbol seems incomplete, but the double S lightning bolts on the back of the van's roof uh, seem to give some added context here. If you're familiar with the Third Reich up until 1945. Then we'll move across to the map and start out in Russia because over the weekend, Ukraine launched a pretty bold attack on Russia's Taganrog airport using drones and targeting the city's airbase. Large explosions were reported, possibly impacting a grounded Russian A-50 radar plane in the process. That's right, another one. Now, Russia's defense ministry stated that 47 drones were aimed at Russia, with the majority striking Rostov, the Rostov region there where the airbase is, and they went on to claim they were all intercepted. No surprises there. But also, footage suggested that significant damage was caused to the facility actually producing or modernizing A-50 spy planes, or at least they were considering repairing uh, them because of the, their rusted, exhausted, outdated, and terribly worn out fleet of the remaining aircraft, since there were already two lost this year. Also, a Ukrainian official confirmed targeting the A-50 platform, stating its destruction. And further to that... A Russian telegram channel stated that a third A-50 radar plane was hit at the airdrome. But either way, this strike marks a strategic win, highlighting Ukraine's ability to penetrate Russian air defences, which had to traverse a, at least 150 kilometers, the Ukrainian drone, uh, into some of Russia's arguably most densely controlled air defence space. And ultimately, this just goes to show that Russia and its military continues to retain many of their main military assets at very close distance and range to Ukrainian borders. Then, also in Russia, a significant blaze ignited at a gas conduit in the Kanti Mansi area, marking the second such occurrence. Following a previous episode, almost a like-for-like -like episode from back in May 2023. And as for this one, no word on the cause, but being literally thousands of kilometers from Ukraine, and therefore out of range of Ukraine's current known technologies in terms of drone capabilities, it's likely we're looking at more internal partisan activity or sheer incompetence. Then we'll head into the Ukrainian map, into the Donbass today, as Ukrainian forces recently thwarted a large-scale armoured attack by Russia, where a pretty grim picture emerged at Klishchivka, as the Ukrainian 92nd Brigade destroyed at least 16 and possibly even a few more armoured vehicles, demonstrating the AFU's pretty consistent ongoing resolve in this area. Now, according to the fighters from the 2nd Assault Battalion of the 92nd Brigade, this encounter was far from a simple task, with a lot of involvement, planning, and action behind the scenes to destroy the Russian metal. And as for the Russian strategy, well, it involved pushing forward with tanks, infantry fighting vehicles, and APCs attempting to breach Ukrainian defenses. But thanks to reconnaissance drones and precise artillery, the Ukrainian side managed to disable and, de and destroy a significant portion of the advancing Russian armor, marking quite the victory on the battlefield. And so this successful defense against the armored assault in Klishchivka follows in the footsteps of a very similar victory in Novomikhailivka from just the other day. 
which continues to underscore the Ukrainian military's capability to repel Russian aggression. And I was just saying a couple of days ago, for Russia to have a chance to take the Shasiv Yar location there, they need to take back uh, this massive green chunk of liberated territory from where Ukraine operates in order for Russia to better, much better position themselves to take advantage of their hope to capture Shasiv Yar. So an event or outcome like this one we saw over the weekend isn't that surprising as it pertains to a, a, a Russian advance attempt in the region failing once again. Then look it around because somewhere in the east a high-tech Swedish archer artillery system operated by Ukraine's 45th Artillery Brigade showed its prowess by using precise counter-battery fire as it managed to obliterate three Russian D-20 howitzer units. And this action actually took place in the strategic uh, Kupiansk area to the north, marking a significant hit against the opposing forces. And as a reminder, the D-20 Soviet platform is actually a 152mm piece. So taking out three of these in just one location is a pretty noteworthy event. Then somewhere else in the east, uh, there was the destruction of a Russian 122mm MLRS BM-21 Grad. So the one of the multiple rocket launchers. And for these platforms as well, well they, they work to blanket an area with simultaneous rocket fire, so it's always useful to have these removed from the field. Then, in the spirit of somewhere in the east, we move to Robotina in Zaporizhia as a Chinese-supplied Desert Cross UTV model code 1003 and a cost of give or take 15 or $20,000 appeared to have hit a landmine while trying to cross a tree line. So Russia is now also resorting to Desert Cross golf carts in the Robotina direction front line. Now, I know I can't expect Russia to show up with a metaphorical armada of tanks every day, and not to be confused with some of the, the Paper Tiger modernized Russian T-40 armata tanks, or super tanks, that will never see the light of day in this war. But what about some BMP infantry fighting vehicles in their place instead? Because these glorified golf carts are just the worst. And technically, they provide even less protection than your standard Buhanka Scooby-Doo van. So this is a pretty serious update if this is how Russia chooses to operate going forward on some axes of attack. Then we'll briefly move to Krinky in the Kherson Oblast as it appears that just one month or less after the Russian side claimed they had taken back the Dnipro bridgehead of Krinky, they now admit Ukraine has actually gained ground. Which is quite accurate as Ukraine made some recent moves to the, the west of the settlement. And there's really no point in the Kremlin or the Russian MOD making these announcements or, or lavish claims because these lies cannot hold up for very long in an active battle zone anyway. Now, having said all that, I do seriously wonder if it was uh, Russian ground commanders that fed this false information right up the chain of command so that they could protect their own behinds. Because they're the ones that are meant to be stamping out the, the Ukrainian bridgeheads here. And so given what I've seen in this war, it probably happened this way, going up the chain in such a fashion. Ah, the Russian MOD, like a headless chicken. Then headed across to some news for the day. So France has equipped Ukraine's forces with uh, Relic 3 non-contact fuses. These devices are designed to use in Caesar howitzers already supplied. And so now Ukrainian gunners can trigger their ordnance to detonate above the ground. As such, this tactic creates a formidable challenge for enemy infantry hiding in trenches, offering them little chance to escape the heat, and also, by its very nature, creates a wider area of effect. Then to some other news, Russia has been experiencing a surge of bankruptcies this year, with their first full months or first full two months of data figures for this year now showing bankruptcies are up 60% from the previous reporting period. So it's not just 1, 2, or even 5 or 10%, but a whopping 60%. 
And so it appears that high interest rates for Russia sit in at about 16%, which are aimed at cooling inflation within the country, are biting for the economy there. Uh, not to mention Western imposed economic sanctions, which play the slow game for, for the Russian economic demise. But they certainly still have a strong tendency to add fuel to the fire. Plus, in terms of Russian economic woes, don't forget that Russia imposed a six-month gasoline export ban on March the 1st amid drone attacks on oil refineries within their country. This forced Russia to reserve refined fuel for domestic use only, but at the expense of additional export revenues that they would otherwise get. Then in some other news, amid strained ties with Russia, Armenia is exploring new prospects, including potential membership in the European Union, as revealed by Foreign Minister Merzoyan in an interview with TRT World, which signals a significant shift in the country's geopolitical orientation, as Armenia is a member of the CSTO Security Pact, which is a very watered-down Russian version of NATO. In fact, when Armenia noticed a few months ago that Russia didn't fulfill its CSTO obligations for security due to a conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan, this actually led to Armenia freezing its participation in the CSTO back on February the 23rd. It was a sunny Friday morning, figuratively speaking, because it was probably a cold and cloudy winter morning. Then headed across to a Russian military mobilization blunder segment, a little bit of an unusual one here, but here we go. So pregnant women have reportedly been urgently discharged from a maternity hospital in Russia's Rostov region, as wounded military personnel will now be treated there instead, as per Russian Telegram channel reports. And as it happened in late February, all female patients were urgently discharged from the now former maternity hospital in Rostovondon. Then from March, the hospital started treating military personnel, uh, the, the wounded in Ukraine, as per the 161.ru reports. Citing four female employees of the midwifery unit and a patient of the medical facility, with a nurse stating, quote, it happened when I was on my shift, I went to the delivery room to get the C-section baby, and I saw people in uniform, then these people came down to the second floor and asked who it was. Uh, the midwife girl said they are soldiers, they told us that there would be a military hospital now. So pregnant women displaced, it's a disturbing shift in priorities displacing expectant mothers for war casualties just when you think uh, you've seen it all in this tactical quagmire. And when first hearing about this, for the life of me, I couldn't get it out of my head. Uh, Putin regularly asking or pushing for women to have five, six, seven, eight, or even more children. It's like he wants to have his cake and eat it too. Well, that, plus he hopes to survive long enough to be president for another 15 or 20 years, which is just enough time to pump out a new generation of young Russian soldiers. But hey, good luck with that, Putin. Then I'll have to leave it at that for today, guys, as I'm overcoming a bit of a headache that's left me pretty exhausted in its wake. But worry not, because I'll leave you with this little nugget. Uh, like the, this, it's a lighter news segment piece, which is from Ukraine's wider intelligence community. And so wide, in fact, that they appeared just outside the Kremlin, or at least the adjoining armory tower, as they displayed a Ukrainian flag colored themed card uh, with the word stating, quote, intelligence is near. So champion effort right there. You never know when Putin might have his last cup of tea. So thanks again for watching, guys. A little bit shorter. I'll be back into the funnies, of course, on the next video. But um, yeah, thanks again for watching. Please continue to like and comment and subscribe if not already. Always helps boost out the channel and spread the message. But yeah, thanks again. And I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers.